this is all the snow we have left. I thought I'd take advantage of the cool temperatures we're having and possibly stay a few days at the cabin. You can see the creeks are rising. All the snow is almost gone. I'm making my way up that mountain slowly but surely. Stay tuned if you guys want to see a nice little overnighter at the cabin. I have all my gear with me here you can see and my pack basket on my back like always. The cabin is right behind me. Take a look at all the greenery. Man, it's pretty comforting. <laughs> that spring is coming. I could finally walk to the cabin without having to worry about sinking up until my, my waist in snow. I'm walking, I'm free to walk without snowshoes. It's super nice. You can see the cabin just peeking through the brush right there to the left side. Look at all the little pine trees, the spruces. Just barely any snow left. There she is in all her glory with all my gear stacked up. Man, there really isn't much snow at all. Where I haven't been, I haven't stepped, there's still a few inches. And in some parts is about 12 inches, but it's slowly leaving. Here's the trail that I just came up. It's about time I start unpacking, check if there's any damages inside the cabin, and let's get started from there. Everything actually looks pretty good. Apart from me, I left some toilet paper there, but that's my bad. Everything is just how I left it. My famous plank to cook and eat is there. We'll be using that quite a lot. And here are all my snacks. First thing first, let's start by a nice fire. Try to light this pretty quickly. Use some newspaper. I hopefully will beat the sunset because once that sun sets it gets pretty cold. It's about minus 10 at night. <clears throat> Nothing compared to like a crazy start of winter cold front but I know that this little stove is more than capable of heating up the entire cabin. The issue is that even if it's hot it's still pretty humid so I really really want to get rid of the humidity especially with my little sleeping bag that I brought. I also have in my chest some wool blankets and I believe I have a pillow. If I don't have one, well I guess my lunch box is gonna be multi-purpose item. But let's get started. Even the paper, not sure if you guys can see that, but it takes quite some time to light up just due to the sheer humidity. A wood cabin is nice, but it's not like modern materials where it's super insulated and the cold and the warmth, you know, they stay inside or they stay outside. If the, the wood is moist, it creates extreme humidity. And as you guys might tell, logs are very hard to dry. That's why, you know, they take years and years to to dry for buildings or even for firewood. It takes quite some time. If you're wondering if your previously cut firewood is ready to burn or not, listen to this and it should let you know if it's ready to burn or if it's still way too humid. I'll put the microphone closer to the wood burning, the log on top. That is a piece that I cut in a previous video. 
and you guys could hear the hissing as it's burning that is actually the sap the humidity the water just everything boiling out of the wood so you could see that the dry wood underneath is burning the top wood really is just having a trouble igniting because if i move it a little bit closer So you could hear just the hissing of all the liquids just boiling out of the wood. That indicates that it is not ready at all to be lit or used as firewood. But in my case, I don't really have a choice. And honestly, it just makes it smell like pine in here. It just smells like resin, so I really don't mind. head inside and let the sleeping bag puff up and take on air because if I leave it in here and only take it out at night the I think it's called down the little feathers and stuff inside are gonna be all crumpled up and it's really really not gonna be warm at all so I have to let the oxygen do its thing let it puff up and take up its actual form go that's that should be good enough I'll come back it's gonna be a little bit thicker the Sun is finally coming out it's a little bit past noon I barely had a breakfast this morning so I'll head back in the cellar and in my lunchbox I have a quite a few snacks that I brought not anything insane but should be good to keep me going at least for today after that I might just head out with a pocket full of shells and maybe just see if I could catch anything. I doubt it. Just the conditions with the snow. It's extremely hard to be silent walking in snow. Every animal out there hears you. But I'll, I'll grab some shells. Go take a little walk maybe up the adjacent mountain here on the other side. We'll see what happens. Usually I'm not very lucky. But maybe since you guys are here. I might catch a little something. This is a dry sausage. I actually make it with my grandfather. Just hand make everything uh, with some hand pick ingredients also. So it is 100% natural, 100% super tasteful. So I have that just with a little piece of cheese. These little things are awesome. They'll fit in your pocket, fit in your pack. You could put four or five of them. They don't really take up a lot of room. And I'll be eating all this with 
my trusty OPNL knife, the little segment on my other videos on how much I love these little things. Very cheap, super high quality. You rarely get that combo in life, but this is just cheap, not cheaply made, very well made, made in France, and extremely simple. Great little first pocket knives, super awesome. So let's get into this. And I also didn't mention, but the steel, I believe this one is stainless steel. They also make a carbon steel and a hundred different sizes in these things. Yeah, and they also keep an edge insanely well. Sausage is still good. If I'm lucky, I'll get this to work. But you can untwist them and then make little swirls. It's fun for kids or adults too. It's very tasty. But, you know, probably gives you cancer like everything else, but whatever. Here for a good time, not a long time. Well, pretty much prepared everything I need. Have the essentials. Water, shells in my pocket, and boomstick to the left of me here. So I'm gonna go take off to the west of the cabin and see if I can see anything. Cabin is right behind me. I kind of went down into the little valley to the west of the cabin, and you could see the amount of snow that there is here. There's a good 10 to 12 inches. I'm guessing. It's because it is in fact in a valley and the trees are pretty high. So it's a little low flat spot that the sun does not get to. So if I'm lucky, I'll try to make it all the way to those treetops on top of that big mountain there. I've been walking for four or five minutes, I would say. And I know the grounds pretty well here just because, you know, it's, it's my land and uh, the cabins nearby. It's about like a five minute walk here to the cabin but I was hearing water and to my surprise there's actually a little stream flowing the water seems actually pretty clear I might come back and fill up my kettle let it boil on the fireplace if I ever need to do the dishes tonight or even tomorrow I'll have some nice boiled sanitized water 10 20 feet upstream it's pretty cool there's some nice deer tracks there aren't super old but i'd say a few weeks just because it's been warm and the snow you could the snow did in fact melt looks kind of like a bedding area i wouldn't see why not it's beside a stream there's some poop on the ground and a bunch of footprints this might have been a nice little bedding area for a deer or two and you could see that they head out right underneath my trail marker there you guys can see behind me just how high i am i'm a good 30 40 feet above the elevation of the cabin there is much more to climb but i think i'll kind of stay on more of flat spots no need to get crazy and start climbing Mount Everest here but yeah I'll try my best and uh, keep you guys updated quite a few feet higher than I was before if you guys could see this white part right here that is the swamp below the cabin that is very far away and I can't really see I can't really show you guys but if I zoom in those treetops right there that is the top of the trees of where the cabin is on that mountain wouldn't even be surprised if that is the big spruce that 
the cabin is right under the tallest tree there. So I am right flush with the top of the trees of that mountain. So I'm pretty high in elevation. Have yet to see any any animals whatsoever. A few ducks actually flying overhead. But they aren't in season. And I do not have a permit for that. So that will not be happening. A few squirrels here and there. But really, I'm just enjoying the day. I doubt I see anything with my asthmatic, unfit panting that I'm doing. But yeah, with all these layers that I have on me and all the weight, I should really go and hit the gym. As soon as the trees get tall and mature, it's super hard for them to stay rooted here. You can see my shadows in the way, but man... The rocks, the entire ground just came up. Now it's all frozen in the roots, but you get the picture. The root can't go deep enough. They just hit bedrock and uh, some very nice potential firewood topples over in the forest. Sadly, it's way too high and way too far from my cabin. Slowly making my way down the mountain. Try not to topple over and splitting my head open. So I'm making it slowly to the bottom of the mountain. And if I go over here, as you can see, I'm taking flat ground. But it also happens to be a pretty nice deer trail. That is some nice fresh poop. Some fresh chocolate chips. So it's a good sign. There's some decent deer around these parts. And that means some venison to be had probably this year hopefully not much of a hunter but I am you get credit for trying right on what this particular species is it looks nice has some super nice colors growing on what I believe is a dead standing pine still has a little bit of greenery but it's already getting eaten from the inside out made it back I could see the smoke from the fire it didn't go out before heading out I actually just chucked a log in there just to make sure that it would last and then infected I'm gonna go and peel a layer off on the inside of the cabin and take care of uh, my arms because I've been <laughs> neglecting them and I'll bring you guys along with me we'll for sure have a drink of water because I'm dying made it back didn't get eaten by a pack of deer or anything so I'm still alive <sighs> yeah. I've been neglecting my tools quite a bit so part of the cabin life I guess so I thought I'd include it but I did in fact see nothing no animals no no dinner so I will in fact keep the cellar uh, nice and cool because I, ne I need to. I'm not one to be a super expert hunter. I have a buddy that is and a whole lot of family members that are. Might as well, right? But I... I'm not too much of a hunter myself. Oh, man. The spring in here is just caked in rust. Man. Take off a light coat of rust real quickly. 
wipe it down with the rag later. Not a big deal. and oily last touch I'll do was just on the trigger itself and can't forget the mag slides and the magazine releases now it is buttery smooth dry fire not recommended but it's better than having tension on the spring put that one there take the candies out of my pocket if anybody is interested in nice candy let me know ground right here take care of the classic noisemaker good old bear protector put these to the side always got to make sure the action functions how it's supposed to Everything works well, trigger, safety, everything, always good, always nice. This one, what I do, a little bit of oil. This one is a little bit more uh, dear to me and a little bit more expensive also. So I'll try to take a little bit more my time and sure I'll take my old nasty cloths instead of, instead of opening new ones whatever just because of this I'll probably get demonetized but I guess it's also a good time to shameless plug. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, leave a comment. Let me know if you want to see more content on firearms or anything like that. Let me know. I have quite a few. Or even if you have any good ideas for videos, post them down below. So this one, I'll clean the barrel just a little bit more. The rifling in here is still super present, but sadly, somebody didn't store it properly between now and uh, 1899 when it was made. You could see, it looks like they've left it in a leather holster. All the friction points, like in the back of the cylinder, the tip of the barrel, the shell ejector, and the ejection port are all pitted I got a pretty good deal on it I mean thousands of dollars off because of minor flaws like so but for me it's a nice shooter really really enjoy this little thing like I said before not to get it confused it is a noisemaker <laughs> I'm not going for accuracy or anything like that 
it is a 40 cal cartridge, I should say. I can't say the B word, people will get offended. But yeah, nice little cartridge. Really happy with my little purchase. I got myself some bread. It's actually some old leftover bread. The packaging is actually paper, so I'll burn it in a fireplace. That's what's going on. Bird fight, I guess. But yeah, the packaging is paper, so less waste. I'll burn it in a fireplace, or I might even keep it to start a fire. But the bread itself is actually almost a brick. So I'll cut it up into pieces with, again, my little trusty knife and put it on my feeding log. So deers, birds, turkeys, they've had a rough winter. At least they'll have something to eat. I still have a salt block in the stump. The bread's really gonna attract, like I said, birds, deer, turkeys, raccoons, squirrels. Hopefully not that many squirrels, but they are running around everywhere. Some nice chunks. You can see how dense that bread is. I'll put some on the ground. Kind of. <laughs> Lightly. I'll start chopping this thing. See how much of a razor blade this knife is. Super slim blade profile. Just just like a razor blade. Perfect size for pocket carry. There. Let's put this one in half. There we go. Call it good. Smaller chunks for birds and small squirrels. And the stump is filled with bigger slices right on top of the salt block so if it gets humid moist a little bit of rain that bread's gonna soak up all the salty water and it will for sure attract deer it's a little bit darker for you guys cuz I'll actually keep the door closed try to get rid of most of this humidity in here and it's actually doing a great job fire hasn't gone out yet in there I'll need to head outside before dark and just start splitting a little bit of firewood just for tonight just so I'm sure I have enough kindling tinder isn't looking too good but I for sure need some more dry logs I would also love to just get this table fixed I actually brought my little drill could do a little bit of a home improvement fixer upper I want to get rid of this entire setup and also be able to actually reuse the planks to make some shelves beside or even behind the fireplace and in the dining kitchen area because I would love a little round wooden table there in the corner go look in my little tool area on the workbench See if there's any screws that I could use to actually fix. It's dark in here. To actually fix my little shelf slash table. Probably not a good idea to have some bare attractants here, but they have some three inch. That's too long. Not sure what's in there. Got some old nails. And I think that's some three inch again. Sure is. Uh, oh yeah, I have some stuff here. That should that should work. You guys, want to see a temperature difference? 
it's about five degrees and as soon as you go on the other side of this window head inside yeah it's 26 degrees 80 degrees Fahrenheit on the inside of the cabin so yeah very very hot tired of uh, this thing I had no materials when I first built the cabin so no materials and no money not more than I have now at least and uh, I actually god damn it I actually built this thing with roofing nails which is the worst nail ever it's good for one thing and one thing only there add another one just to be sure That's not going anywhere. It's hotter outside. I started the fire, so my door has like a three quarter inch play in it. But I'll try to just plant a screw right where my door bar is. It's a very simple door bar, but it, it works. It's not super, super strong, but a screw should be able to remove the slack I'm Too much unscrewed. Oh. Nobody's getting in, nobody's getting out. Super. Oh, yeah, that's nice. barely any play now for those of you wondering and that don't know how I lock my door from the inside on the outside I have a door bar when I leave it's a little bit harder for bears and stuff to get the claws on there and rip the door clean off the hinges but on the inside if or when I sleep here I don't want anything getting in when I'm in there so I have this piece this is actually It's a, if I remember correctly, a cross-cut saw tensioner. So the flat part was actually welded onto the saw. I'll show you guys on my saw that I have on the inside. But, uh, and there was a bolt on one side, so you could tighten your blade and the handle and so on. But me, I use it as a key, so I put that in there. And then really can't open the door bar anymore. Remove it door bar opens very primitive but it works and it's simple For the people that missed it, last time I did a very quick and easy pot scraper. Some people in the comments actually mentioned that uh, there is some type of like steel wool type material that's not steel. 
that is made for pot scrapers. Also, that's good. Uh, <laughs> it's special since it's forecast iron pan, so you really don't want to take the se seasoning out of it. But so far, my little wood scraper has done the job just fine. I have my drill, so since I actually brought it, I'll just drill a hole in it. And hopefully it won't split in half. I will put a little toggle on there, a little lanyard, just so I don't, like, in the dark grab it and throw it in the in the fire. <laughs> I'll actually know that it's something important and I'll hang it around the kitchen area, I guess. Oh. Hole has been made. I have my trusty jute twine here. And can't forget about my knife. Take that out. Give myself a good length. Cut that. That's like 16 inches. Drill bits aren't the best for wood. They're metal bits, so they really kind of mess up the wood when they go in. But all in all, should have worked just fine. Hey, there we go. Perfect. It's a nice little lanyard, little toggle on there. Scrape it, hang it on the wall. Nice. I think I actually have a few nails that are free over there. Let's go take a look. I actually have a nail right here. Boom. It's actually off the counter, hanging off the logs, so you know, the mice have less of a chance of devouring the entire thing. I'm trying to stoke up the fire a little bit, get it a little bit hotter than just coals, but we'll see how that goes. I, I put a log in there and it's pretty green. But... I'm trying to bring up the heat just a little bit, warm up my pan, and I'll throw in some little spring rolls and dumplings on there just so they could heat up a little bit so I don't have to eat them cold. But for now, like I said, just trying to bring the heat up a little bit. Moving that log out of the way and then throwing another one on. While that fire's on, it's gonna dry out the other log and it's a nice little cycle. Not sure if this is going to end up being my supper or not, but there's more than I thought. For now, I'll consider it as a quick snack. Quick close up, two spring rolls, four dumplings, just a little leftover from yesterday. I thought it'd be a great idea to just bring here and make them all nice and crispy on the stove if the pan gets hot enough. I've been just relaxing, laying in bed now for probably half an hour, waiting on my food to get ready. I'd occasionally just flip them over and uh, stoking the fire a little bit, but give it two, three more minutes and should be good. I'm starting to get hungry a little bit. I finished my water bottle, so one will water down, but that's not too bad. It's actually livable in here. It's not a thousand degrees like in the winter. I'm trying to keep the temperature down 
it's actually hard <laughs> with a stove like this because I could just put two logs in it and it's going to be 40 degrees in here and I really 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 don't want that to happen I actually want it to be livable and sleepable so if it stays this temperature I'll peel off a few layers before going to bed and it should be doable well, about 10 minutes later let's give her a go yeah they're they're starting to be pretty crispy but doesn't really matter to me I even forgot the sauce so now, I think these are chicken dumplings and the spring rolls are vegetable and I believe a little bit of chicken tasty These are properly crispy. Oh, oh, it's hot. This whole time I was complaining about a splitting stump, but there's a stump right here. I had to, I'm pretty sure I cut this tree for the cabin when I built it, and there was a stump right here. It's a pine stump, but whatever. It'll do just fine. This is some pretty dry pieces that I dug up from underneath the firewood pile. See, they're they're very dry. Splitting these just so I have something to restart the fire during the night. This is some maple. The center of it is punky, but should be good all in all. That is very, very hard. Let me just swing a little bit harder. There we go. Might get a few more. I actually found all these. They're pre-split, so I was thinking ahead at the time. Plus everything I have on the ground here and I'm not missing any in there either. I have a bunch more. So I'll take this inside, stack it up neatly over the newer, wetter stuff. Just so I know when it's dark in there, I could stick my hand on the wood pile and open the fireplace door and just stick it in. I'll be sure that it's 100% dry wood. Ooh, it's hot in here. Since I'm here, might as well I'll take these down. I do believe, yeah, so these work, so that's good. The casing is cracked a little bit, but it doesn't really matter. There we go. Bring these inside. For the front, I'm thinking just about removing everything, including the bell just so it's a little bit different but yeah we'll uh we'll see about that remove the bell remove the lights remove the little hanging ornament things take the little sleigh out put everything just in the back shed and even now that i think about it once i put a door on my little tree house i'll be able to store stuff in there I'm making myself more and more storage. It's awesome. So yeah, let's get started. Well, I believe this thing's been here for two years. I'll take it off for summertime.
that doesn't look too bad. I'll keep the wreath there just because it's still frozen and the pine needles look awesome still. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, as soon as that, there, I'll even take this out. <clears throat> as soon as those start dying, when the spring starts really setting in and the temperatures start getting hot, I'll remove it like every single year. But it is reusable, so I'm thankful I thought of something instead of always starting from scratch. I seem to have misplaced my tape measure. No idea what the heck I did with it. I feel like I can see it somewhere, but maybe it's inside the cabin. I have no idea. But I'm having trouble finding it and I don't think it's in there. I also need to repair this. I'll go get a hammer and some screws. But yeah. Uh, it's not there, no idea where it could be. I believe it was a new one too. I just want to measure how wide the, the door has to be. I have two planks left, it's obviously not enough. That sucks. Planted the nails and also putting in a few screws in there. It's not much, but it'll help for sure. have my logging tape that we'll have to do for now. That is 41 inches. It's not too bad. I thought it was a little bit less than four feet. And I wasn't wrong. So I'll need to try and figure something out. Well, I got to calculating, and even if I'm bad at math, I could clearly see that uh, it's just not going to work. I don't have enough planks. I have a bunch more, but I need my ATV to bring them because I surely won't bring like 10 planks at once. It's just too much work and uh, way too lazy. I'm not doing that. I know I could wait for my TV and uh, once I bring it back here, I'll, I'll be just fine. But for now, I'm trying to justify a job that I need to do somewhere with my drill because I had to drag these things all the way over here and it's like 10 pounds a bag, so I really don't want to go back home and not really have used them. But yeah, I know there's the top triangles that kind of need to be blocked off that I kind of hurried up to do that during... The winter time, it was really cold and I just wanted to put a roof on, so I hurried up as fast as I could. Uh, yeah, so not sure what I could use my my little drill for. I could probably do a few shelves on the inside, but then again, I don't even know if it's worth it. I'll have to wait, but yeah. It sucks, I really wanted to do the door, but guess I'll wait.
garden looks right about half decent. I got a tree branch that fell on it, but I'll remove that. You could see where everything was, all the little tags are still there. So everything that I took is supposed to come back the year after. I don't want to keep buying spices and flowers, so I'll try to save a little bit of money with that. So we'll see how everything goes. Hopefully the snow when it's hot and cold. Sometimes you'll just kill off the seeds, but we'll just have to wait and see. Thought I'd head out and maybe head for a little walk and see how the beaver dam is doing and if the creek is unfrozen i can't see it on my way here the sun is already setting behind the mountains right on top of me so let's head out and see how that creek's doing made it down to the swamp see the creek is super clear there's a bunch just feeding a bigger wider one over there that kind of feeds a little stream and a little pond so let's head up and see how that's doing one healthy stream my little dam is holding a little bit of water back it's flowing underneath and a log got wedged underneath it but that's that's fine let's see how wide it gets there's another little waterfall right there. It's actually an old beaver dam. Yeah, a pretty solid stream of water. It's officially six o'clock, so it's getting pretty dark. Like I said before, that was about an hour ago. The sun was setting behind the mountains. So now it's a little bit cloudier, a little bit gloomier outside. But I did in fact turn on my light that I brought. So that's how you guys could see in here. For the time being, I was just kind of relaxing and sitting down and drinking a bit of water. From uh, I just came back from a little walk, so I was a little bit thirsty. But yeah, I'll sit here, relax a little bit. I actually don't think I'll have supper tonight. I'm really not that hungry. The little snack I had was actually plenty. I might actually just take my boots off, relax a little bit on the bed, let them dry off in front of the fire, which is barely working. And since it's been going all day, at a low pace, it got rid of all the humidity and it is still above 25 degrees Celsius. Very hot. So yeah, I took off a, a layer and I'm relaxing. I won't be going to bed late tonight. Man, <laughs> walking here and taking all my little walks, it really, it's quite exhausting.
the sun is setting rather quickly. It would be dark already, but we advanced the time an hour, I think one or two weeks ago. So that's not really helping, but I'm trying to get some work done while I can, using up all the daylight as much as possible. But like always, you know, can't really do everything, you don't really have time to do everything. I still find it pretty annoying that I don't have really any means to bring planks just to finish my door. I don't even have any hinges, but I, I wanted to at least just hang it up and have something that resembles a door, even if it's not perfect, no hinges, whatever. It would stop the wind from making a tornado effect on the inside and dragging in a bunch of pine needles and dead branches. But can't have everything in life, I'm not that lucky, so I'll wait until whenever I can to actually have hinges and an ATV to bring my little planks. Hopefully it won't be too soft to get here. I know sometimes in spring it's almost pretty pretty impossible for me to get here because the water's high, the creeks rise, and the swamp floods for like max a month. If I'm lucky only for a few weeks. So I'll need to use my two legs once more to make it here. It's officially 7.20 and it is getting very dark and very cold. The temperature dropped very quickly. You guys can see, can't really see anything. It's just what's left of the little sunlight is reflecting off the snow because if I <laughs> look at the cabin, there is nothing to see at all. You guys could see what's happening because like I said before, I uh, <laughs> brought myself a little light with me. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm starting to almost let the fire die just because I want it to be livable again in here. Don't want it to be a thousand degrees for me to sleep. I might head to bed at around eight or nine o'clock, but yeah. It's so nice having dry wood. It ignites right away. I'm just sitting here and relaxing once more. And I'm also reading comments on some of my videos Well, they are uh, <laughs> they're like 99.9% .9 positive, so that's awesome. I'm I'm just in the comment section, so I could see every comment that everybody posted. You know, I'm I'm just looking for ideas, and somebody out there uh, mentioned two months ago because I asked for you know like, how would I go about building an outhouse or how would I go about doing an outdoor kitchen and blah 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 and you see this guy saying that it's it's better for an outhouse because you know before i had to go do business and it's not always great when there's snow or bugs it's terrible but uh he like he said he says usually it's away from the cabin and you know you just dig a hole and yes in the summer it was going to be smell but from what i experienced because i had used an outhouse before and I know people that have outhouses the worst thing you could do for an outhouse is have water in it that's disgusting it you'll die when you go in there it'll make nasty fumes it will smell terrible and it's just not something you want to do but sometimes you can help it obviously with the snow thawing and all that stuff but I'm talking about long term uh, don't build it near a creek don't build it near a ditch it's disgusting the one outhouse that I used and was pretty familiar with, you have to put limestone in there. You just like throw some on there a few times a month just because it really cuts down on odor and it's pretty much you can stick your head in the hole and you won't smell anything. But I would really like something simple. I would like that to be my next project. If I have enough planks, I think it would be awesome. Just a very small, like a four foot, four and a half, five foot outhouse very small with a little little moon in the door <laughs> i think that would be awesome but you know I w we'll see it's also going to be a hassle just to dig out a massive hole just a hole big enough i have no idea how i do that but hey uh i'll give it a try 
like I said, usually I work most of the time alone. <laughs> I could ask for help, but uh, yeah, I'll I'll try digging. You know, like a, a six foot hole, maybe eight foot hole should be enough. Usually it's usually like 10 plus. And some people move it, but since I'm not here full time, I think that just a stationary location, just one main location should be enough because I'll have to dig by hand and <laughs> It's very hard, and I know that I'm on a mountain, so there's going to be a lot of rocks. It's hard to see, but I hung my jacket in front of the window just because I don't want to go outside and close my shutter. It's just, I don't have shades yet or any type of blinds, and I don't feel like getting waken up by the sunshine in my face, so I just hung my coat there. The other side... I'll just close my shutter. There we go. Should be good enough. Uh, window is closed. I'm again taking my boots off for probably the last time. They are a little bit humid, but not too bad. Beside the fireplace, I might just eat a little snack and head to bed soon enough. My phone's about to die. I'm at 11%, but yeah, I'm gonna peel off a few layers, lay down a little bit, and uh, yeah, we'll see how everything goes. I'll head to bed soon. It's still pretty early. It's a I believe it's around, what time is it? It's around 8 o'clock, but it is super dark and I'm still pretty tired. I had to, I went on a few walks and I had to bring all my stuff here. So, yeah, I'll see you guys in the morning. And, uh, yeah, I'll try to have <laughs> a pretty decent night's sleep. For now, it's way too hot in here. Uh, I keep putting one log at a time in the fire. It slowly dies down and I'll add another one. But it's just way too hot in here. I can't see, but before it was a little bit under 30, so like 28, 29. I usually like sleeping at like 18 to 20. So it is very hot. If needs be, I'll just sleep on top of the sleeping bag. But for now, uh, I'll take off my shirt and my good old pants put everything up next to the fire and see you guys tomorrow morning I've been trying to sleep now for at least an hour and it's a thousand degrees in here it is super hot I can hear the coyotes outside right now but yeah man it is freaking hot in here it's 33 degrees way 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 too hot for me man I don't know how late it is but I can't sleep at all little light you're seeing is the stove turning itself on, self on what the hell uh, <laughs> the <laughs> I'm tired it's the wood relighting itself again in the stove every time that happens you guys can't see but the entire cabin lights up and just from that little crack and the little holes on top you can see the flames just dancing about it's not super relaxing it's not a nice dance it's more of a rave but <coughs> it's still boiling hot in here I'm just hoping for this damn thing to die already turned on the light water itself is almost you know, like piss so that's good next time even if it's like minus 10 in the cabin don't care mm. 
I'm gonna have to go pee now. It's 2.30 a.m. Going on to 2.45. I got up during the night just to put my t-shirt back on and now I'll probably try to just start the fireplace. It's 15 degrees in here right now. It's super nice. But just in case it gets a little bit colder outside and the cabin cools off more. I'll uh, try to start a little fire. I really, really don't want it to get much hotter than it already is. Because 15 is perfect for me. <laughs> I love it. It's awesome. But I don't feel like like the temperature dropping to like 10 or 5 degrees. It's going to be too much work to get it back up in the morning. So I'll go ahead and start a very small fire. Just woke up. Actually slept pretty good, things considered. It's 7 o'clock. So, well, it's just 6.50, it's almost 7 o'clock. I'll start a little fire, but it's still pretty warm in here. But it's right under 20 degrees, so really not worried. I'm in a t-shirt, I'm fine. So, like I said, I just woke up, got dressed. The sun is just starting to rise, so I'll have a drink, maybe have like a, a little snack, and start packing stuff up. It's actually pretty cold outside, it's minus 3, and without a fire inside, it was 20 degrees. I'm really not super hungry this morning, so I'm just eating. I have a <laughs> super small snack size box of dried raisins, so that's going to be good enough, and if needs be, I'm still a little bit hungry, I'll eat some trail mix that I have on the little table over there. All things considered, I actually slept pretty well. Uh, I woke up, what was it, I think twice. Once the fire went out, like I said, it was 15 degrees, I think, when I turned on the camera started the fire climbed up instantly and since then I put a round piece of maple in there and I think up until say 2 30 to 6 at least this morning like I said it was 20 degrees really wasn't cold at all I was in a t-shirt just fine
it's about time we part ways. Thank you guys so much for joining me for my first overnight video. It's pretty fun to make. Always a fun experience sleeping in new places. If you have any comments, suggestions, or any input on the video, something you'd like to see, let me know and I'll be sure to take note. Thanks for watching and like always, comment, like, and subscribe if you enjoyed.